Hey, everybody, what's going on? Rob Cesarino back, and uh, we're doing something different here today on the show because we are going to be talking about a big news story in our world, and I'm here uh, back with our chief big brother correspondent, Taryn Armstrong. Taryn, how are you? I'm great. Ready to, to chat. Yeah, well, Taryn and I were talking yesterday, and Taryn was asking me if I had heard a lot about the new Mr. Beast reality show, the $100 million project that's coming to Amazon Prime. And I had seen the headlines, but I didn't know a lot of the particulars. But uh, Taryn uh, had seen an interview, and let's we're going to talk about how we think might be a huge deal in the reality TV world. Yeah, it, it was just weird. It's like, it's weird, you know, Mr. Beast is, if you don't know, the biggest YouTuber in the world. Uh, he gets hundreds of millions of views. He has hundreds of millions of subscribers. Um, and he recently revealed that he has this, you know, hundred million dollar deal with Amazon to make what is essentially a reality game show, um, mm -hmm. which isn't that far fetched because a lot of the videos he's been making, especially recently, have been in that vein. I think his biggest video is Squid Games, where he basically recreated the set of Squid Game and did a video where he put like you know five hundred people and he ran them through it. Uh, which then Netflix did their own version of Squid Games. And a lot of people were like, you know what? Mr. Beast kind of maybe did a little better. Mm -hmm. um, and so it makes sense that like this is a, a natural progression, but it's kind of a big deal that this YouTuber is now getting involved in the like more conventional streaming space. It's weird to call it conventional because streaming is still fairly new, but uh, it is this, it's this weird convergence of reality shows uh, which are now booming on streaming. And there's this new genre, new like sort of uh, eco uh, chamber of, of reality te television on streaming that's now being integrated with this, like the biggest YouTuber in the world. And I thought it was interesting, especially the way that he was talking about it in his interview with Colin and Samir. He was talking about how he, he doesn't want to just make like, you know, a regular reality show. He wants it to be more like, how he does his YouTube stuff with maybe a little bit less of the constraints that YouTube has yeah. and more budget. Um, and one of the things he talked about was uh, that really like set my mind on this was he was like, you know, for instance, I think confessionals are boring, like cutting away from the action to talking heads with nothing else happening. That's boring. And that makes sense. Like Mr. Beast is like the mm -hmm. guy that does super fast stuff. So he wants to ideally just always have in action confessionals where he's talking to people while stuff is happening um yeah. and it was just like yeah that kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah it's it's a very interesting idea and so for mr beast to come in now uh, the thing that really blows me away about mr beast um is that he's so young he's so prolific uh and i believe that he's 25 years old mr beast and uh that he has become like the world's most prolific content creator and in my mind, you know, I, I've been really interested and fascinated with everything that he's done to have all of his success on YouTube. And I've really been like uh, watching everything that he's been doing. And so he's been on this trajectory, Taryn, where I really feel like that he is headed towards and, and he's talked about this in different interviews where he's going to be in, in his mind. And I don't doubt him that he's going to be the biggest entertainer ever that bigger than any movie star you could think of, any entertainer who ever lived, Mr. Beast is going to be bigger than any of them. And it, it, it's, it sounds far-fetched probably if you are not in the sphere of this, but like the numbers are staggering. Uh, again, like hundreds of millions of views. Uh, he talked about in the interview how uh, basically when he looks at his channel and he looks at like the unique number of people who have gone to his channel mm -hmm. and watched a video, it's it was so what something like 10% of the world population like right that's ridiculous and when you look at like ratings for regular television shows he dwarfs that yeah. um and and it's like like that's really interesting and so now he's getting involved in this more conventional space where there is more worldwide like a mainstream press and like that could be huge for not only him but like the how youtube and this kind of content interacts with yeah. Uh, with mainstream. 
Yeah, and I want to make sure yeah, you mentioned it earlier. The Colin and Samir interview that he did uh, was uh, really like uh, our primary source for a lot of the stuff ab- around this new Mr. Beast television show, although that there had been a lot of news coverage about it. Mr. Beast was recently uh, profiled on the cover of Time magazine, also uh, as uh, being like the world's uh, most watched person. And so there's a lot of attention right now on Mr. Beast. But Taryn, what I thought was really interesting was does Mr. Beast need a show on Amazon Prime? Well, yeah, that is the interesting thing. And they talked about it in the interview where it's like there are fewer theoretically like subscribers to Amazon Prime than there are like Mr. Beast viewers. Um, and so that, that that's the interesting question of like in some ways, no. But in other ways, like, yeah, the Squid Game video was his highest viewed video. And that's in large part because in Netflix is bigger, I think, than Amazon. Mm-hmm. But uh, but like there is still something to the mainstream press cycle like these the the more conventional studio television shows get way more press than somebody like Mr. Beast, despite mm-hmm. the fact that he's starting to get more press. Um, and so I think getting involved in this world, uh, it it doesn't necessarily change his viewership in terms right. of or maybe it will. But like. Uh, I think it more changes the 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 focus, the the talk about. I mean, we're talking about him right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Right? So, so I, I guess so. Yeah. So I think that there is like a very like underappreciated aspect of like what he's been able to do. When like when you compare that, how popular his stuff is versus like it's like more popular than any other like TV show or movie like in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And um and and I'm interested to see what it does for reality tv as well yes. like it's all obviously it's very interesting for i think the the industry as a whole but like for reality tv where we are like this is our domain right like this is, we talk about these shows we watch these shows uh it, it was really interesting to to hear the way that he approaches things because he i've watched his videos and and i wasn't like somebody who watches videos like too far back but i watched the squid game one and i started getting invested in these mm-hmm. things and uh, his one uh, age one versus to a hundred video, which had uh, Jesse from Survivor in it, yeah, um, yeah, his was son really Gio. good. Yeah, like he's focusing more on like storytelling and character building, and like he's got a couple of videos where like he'll put one guy and he'll go through like eight different challenges, and if he gets all gets through all eight, he'll get like eight hundred thousand dollars. And like there's two videos he failed both times at the same thing, mm-hmm. and I'm invested in this guy. I'm like, do another yeah. one. I want to see him win. Well, I think the thing that's really amazing to me about what Mr. Beast does is that he is a maniac in that, like, he leaves nothing to chance. And so when we sort of like, okay, view like what he's doing on YouTube versus the stuff and the established reality TV franchises that we have covered for all these years, a lot of these shows, the old guard like is very set in their ways. And, you know, they, they do what they do for any number of reasons, except we have studied exactly what the audience wants that if they if the audience doesn't like it we don't do this thing but mr beast is, and his team of like hundreds and hundreds of people are analyzing the attention graphs of all this it's like okay oh people are clicking off the video here at this point we need to do something to bring them back in and to, that we've talked about this a lot over the years that's like the antithesis of how the traditional reality tv powers that be handle things yeah, I mean, you know, when the real world and other kinds of shows like that were basically started in like 1992, um, around that that time, uh, to to this day, like over 30 years, the formula has kind of been pretty similar. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously different formats, different games, different kinds of things, but like the concepts of like, you know, you have an episode, you usually eliminate one person per episode, you usually have talking heads. And and I think that, and again, it comes down to like this idea of the confessionals being boring. Because when I when he said that, I, like it took me back 30 years of reality TV. And I was like, he's right. Like there's there's a place for confessionals. And I like the concept of, oh, you get to hear people's thoughts in, you know, while they're you know, while you're watching a thing like that's a cool concept. But the reality is that like for a lot of these shows, it's kind of become I'm, this is just a place for the producers to tell you what to say. And you're explaining the situation or mm-hmm. you're putting in like a funny pun, joke, quip, whatever. 
Um, and that's never going to be as good as if you're doing it in real time. Uh, so, you know, he's I, what I'm interested in is if this is a success, does this shake up how people look at how you structure these shows? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, you, we have these juggernauts, Big Brother and Survivor. They've been doing things pretty similarly for over 20 years. Um, and there are other shows like, you know, there's the genius was re announced recently for the UK and devil's plan, uh, from, from Korea, uh, you know, they mix it up a little bit. Like they, they shift around the way that they edit things and, uh, it doesn't have to be quite so linear, but like the way that Mr. Beast does a thing is, is very different. And, and some people it's not for them. Uh, you know, this is definitely like, I think a young person's game for Mr. Beast. Like he is very much, I want to grab your attention and I never want to let go. But that's interesting to me to, to yeah. see how what approach that might take. No, uh, he was asked uh, in the interview with Colin and Samir about like, what what are your reality TV influences? And he says that he doesn't really have any. So he's not really working off of it. I know that there are a lot of folks like on the Mr. Beast team that like shows like uh, Survivor and Big Brother. But, you know, he himself as a creator is not really influenced by like what has existed. He gives some hints to what the format could be. And if you know Mr. Beast, that I would imagine we're starting with a pool of applicants, probably in the neighborhood of, I'd say, between like 100 to 500 people. I think I think what I'm seeing is like potentially over a thousand. <laughs> over a thousand people. OK. And really, I mean, that, that that's sort of like the ethos of Mr. Beast is that, OK, this is going to be some kind of like a meritocracy of that. We are going to gather a group of people and anybody who watches Mr. Beast you could be that person who ends up winning this money. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that, um, you know, he plans to like have like basically how Mr. Beast videos work often with this sort of thing. He's got like his crew of people and they're like messing around uh, and, and joking while he's doing the hosting. And, and if there needs to be any kind of like confessional or voiceover, he usually does it like as quickly as possible. They have like, you know, they're constantly putting in like animations to explain what he's about to do or what needs to be done as quickly as possible. Like this isn't, you know, the devil's plan where we're going to spend five minutes explaining the game we're about to see. Like uh, Mr. Beast is like it probably like if it can't be done in 10 seconds, like, we're, like we need to fix it. Um, and they're like, explain it once, not like Big Brother. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, you know, nobody on a, in a Mr. Beast video is coming out and being like, so I walked out into Mr. Beast's warehouse and like, and I, I can immediately see why Mr. Beast would think that's boring yeah. because yeah. it's, uh, it's such an antithesis to how he operates. Um, so I, I'm very curious to see. And, and basically what he said is that uh, he went to Amazon because they gave him complete creative control. It's, it's entirely yeah. his show. He completely is in charge of, of what gets made. So uh, there's no amount of like old guard that's going to be like, this isn't what works. You need to do x y and z um he's just going to try to adapt his youtube content to a more conventional reality show format yeah it sounded like there were a few different buyers and that amazon was the one that was going to give him the most uh creative control and why not i mean that i, I i've talked about this on other podcasts but like uh who's the face of amazon prime <laughs> Bezos. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like, sure, that this is like a destination. It also sounds like that there's going to be the first episode is going to air on his YouTube channel, uh, which is probably going to get way more eyeballs than anything on Amazon Prime. So that's a great way to be. Able, I mean, it's like a, like a, a hundred million dollar commercial for Amazon Prime is basically like uh, what they're doing. And they're getting a show out of it, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so um, it's it's just it's it, it is very interesting to me. And, and there's obviously the chance that it just like doesn't work. Uh, that that Mr. Beast style uh, content does not translate to Amazon. Maybe his fan base doesn't like it as much, or maybe his fan base just doesn't pay for Amazon Prime, uh, and it, and it flops in that way. Um, but I, I I'm very curious to see its impact because it's a huge deal, um, a large large amount of money. This uh, has to be one of the most mm -hmm. expensive, if not the most expensive, reality show ever made. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I, I'm, I'm excited to see like what happens, uh, one way or the other, because, you know, may, maybe the old guard, maybe they have a point, maybe we're criticizing them, uh, too much sometimes and they, they know what they're doing, or maybe this is like, you know, young blood coming in and it'll shake things up and we'll get more changes to the industry, which I think 
I would personally like because we have so many new shows and they're all still kind of following the same format. And if they don't, they're, yeah. they're veering off just a little bit, just a little bit here or there. Yeah. So, yeah. And, well, we know how much this industry is, you know, a lot of copycat. And so if this ends up being successful, I think we're going to see a lot of these other, you know, streaming platforms and traditional broadcast networks try to emulate uh, what th this type of format might look like. We haven't mentioned the prize uh, is reported to be uh, a five million dollar cash prize, which uh, was announced as the biggest i saw that uh andy denhart reality blurred had said that actually the x factor had had a five million dollar cash prize but a, a a huge number for a reality tv show winner yes well i because i know that the the squid the netflix squid game show had like the 4.5 million and they said that was the biggest prize so i'm sure that this five million figure came from just like we just need to be squid game mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I, if if there was a bigger prize somewhere else i'm sure mr beast would just be like okay well let's just make it 5.5 or whatever it needs to be so yeah five make... five million one dollars yeah uh, they'll, they'll make it happen and it sounds like that mr beast is going to uh be beginning to uh film this at some point later on this year i mean i haven't seen any sort of like casting announcement or anything uh like that out there you would think that that would be you know sort of like widely publicized but you know it Taren, i don't think they're going to be casting it like survivor where you know you're going to have like months and months of applicants i think they're going to find you know a couple thousand people or whatever and figure okay just get them here yeah i mean i i i I'm, i don't know a lot about how mr beast recruits for his videos but like i think my my basic understanding is that he just kind of grabs subscribers <laughs> like mm -hmm. he's just kind of like uh here's a bunch of like people um you know, call them out to to do this thing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, casting is is a huge. Uh, it's another thing. Like yeah, like for a show like this, even Squid Game, uh, they went through a, a fairly conventional casting process, even though there were you know four hundred of them or whatever. Uh, but I don't know that, that that's the same for Mr. Beast. I think he very much is, you know, where a lot of these shows are like we need to cast correctly, we need to create these storylines. I think Mr. Beast is like. I'm going to do a big crazy thing and that's the story mm -hmm. and if and if and if characters you know come up through that perfect uh that's what I'm going to show yeah. uh but but yeah I again I think the approach is so different but he's not looking for people that oh I'm going to tell this person's story on exactly. my thing like uh, that he's going to just like get people out there and then tell the stories uh that come up out of the situations that happen that we would imagine mm -hmm. yeah so Later on this year, they're going to film this. Uh, he makes it sound like that uh, towards the end of the year, November, December is when six to ten episodes of uh, Beast Games is going to be airing on Amazon Prime. Should be very exciting. He's going to continue making his regular YouTube videos also at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of guy Mr. Beast is. At the start of this interview that we're talking about, he's wearing a hazmat suit. Um, and he's like, sorry, I'm wearing this. I have two people trapped in a bunker right now. Uh, and this is the costume for that video that we're shooting. So I just didn't take it off. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. yeah, he's just got people trapped. Like, uh, you know, he, there's probably somebody stuck in a grocery store somewhere. Uh, there's probably, you know, another two people buried underground right now that, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, this. He, he's, he's he just got back from an abandoned island. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Beast Games coming later on this year. We'll keep an eye out on it and then we'll be following the news on this as uh, we get closer. Yeah, we'll see what it does. Taryn, anything else about uh, how Mr. Beast is about to really change the way the game is played? Well, I guess I guess one more thing that I'll say is that, um, you know, what what is interesting to me is that obviously Mr. Beast is making this kind of content on YouTube and it's now transferring to Amazon. But like there are other other YouTube shows that are doing things like this. Um, I was talking to to Rob the other day about a show called Jetlag, um, which is like a YouTube show made by uh, these three guys who it's it's kind of like the amazing race, but for three like nerdy friends uh, who create their own kind of game, like playing tag across Europe or hide and seek across Switzerland. Um, and it's basically a reality show, but like a YouTube show. And 
I think it's like, you know, I, I watched that and then I watched The Amazing Race and I'm like, The Amazing Race is so tired in comparison to mm -hmm. this like fresh take on travel game show. Uh, yeah. and, and that's the sort of thing that like, even if it's not like a Mr. Beast copycat, it's like, can this YouTube kind of format transfer? Because I think there are a lot of really interesting and fresh ideas on that platform. And I'm sure it's on like a fraction of the budget of oh, yeah. the Amazing Race. Yeah, and it gets like, you know, 500,000 to like a million views per episode. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's that's great. That's I think it's, it's like kind of close to what Amazing Race is pulling. Yeah. So, you know, these uh, Mr. Beast shows that th they cost a lot of money, but th it's all on the screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, his whole thing is that he reinvests all of the money that he makes and in, back into the videos. Mm -hmm. So, all right. We'll see what he's uh, going to do. He promises each episode of Beast Games is going to be a bigger build than any previous Mr. Beast video. Uh, so uh, looking forward to seeing what comes out of this. All right, Taryn, what else is going on for you? Uh, well, you know, we're talking about other reality shows. Big Brother Canada is on right now. Uh, Survivor is on right now. Uh, I'm streaming on Twitch. I watch episodes live while they're on the air. and We react to them uh, as they're happening. So that's a fun time as well. Okay, we wanted to try something new today. If you like this format, let us know in the comments and we'll try to do more breaking reality TV news uh, when it comes up. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.